again everyone, it's Jim Lynn here, welcome back to my workshop. This is part two of our super tune of the record 405 multiplane. So let's get started. I'm going to work on this area here. This is the main stock cutter support bed and if you remember from part one it's not quite coplanar with its counterpart on the sliding section. So I need a way to get in there to correct it. I did think to use a file but I don't have one that fits, so the obvious option, and in keeping with my usual practice, is to fettle up one of these cutters and use that with some abrasive paper stuck to it. This is the front side of the 5 16 cutter, and it's this surface that contacts the cutter bed on the main stock. As you can see, it's quite pitted, but reasonably clean, so as long as I can get it flat, it won't matter if some pits remain. Using my mag switch for a better grip, a few minutes on 120 grit paper did the trick. I did the same process on the back side. Now this is the important side, as any pitting near the cutting edge would be a problem. But it seems fine. Looking at the edges now, there's some work to be done there too. So I set up a squared off block to keep them square. But after a few strokes I realised they're not square. The edges are ground with a bevel, as you can see here. But why? Well it's for clearance. Now it's obvious to me now I see it, but of course if you didn't have this clearance angle, the rear edges of the cutter might bind as the groove gets deeper. Now I could have made up a block with the required bevel angle, but who's got the time for that? So I just did it freehand. Fortunately, the blades are thick enough that you can easily feel the edge and keep the cutter properly engaged by just locking your arms. But this means that I can't use this cutter as a tool because its edge won't touch this surface in here. So I need something with a square edge. I found this. My friend Dorothy gave me this around 30 years ago and it was made by her late father but I'm going to use it as a tool to carry a brace of paper. So first I'll clean it with some meths. Then I'll cut some 120 grit paper. Spray it with adhesive. Wrap it on. and clamping for a while helps get good even adhesion. So this is my clamping set up to do the work. Now the bosses around the holes for the rods are actually quite robust, but I still used only just enough pressure. Initially the tool was a tighter fit than I expected, but after a while it dropped in nicely. Now there's quite a lot of work to do here. Remember I'm trying to bring the cutter bed down coplanar with its counterpart on the sliding section. I had the paper on both sides initially just to get down to that side wall but once that was done a narrow strip on one side only was sufficient and it enabled me to slide along my thumb tip to apply pressure. Every so often I'd check progress by matching up the sliding section but eventually I realised that I'd achieved coplanar at the tips, but in the centre I was just flogging a dead horse. I simply had no way of targeting sufficient pressure in that area. So I stopped and we'll just have to accept it as it is. I did a little more work with both main parts locked together. Now the result is okay, but it's not brilliant. Keeping pressure on was really difficult and access was difficult. And anyway, I thought if I did any more, I might make it coplanar in one place, but not so much in the other. And those surfaces are a bit rough, but I'll polish them later on when we finish up. Moving on to some of the other parts now. This threaded rod on the depth of cut adjuster needs cleaning, but there's no way of getting it off the main stock. This little key pin prevents that, and I can't see any non-destructive way of getting it out. So we just have to do our best with the wire brush. And of course later some lubrication will help with function. I found these jeweler's clamps grip the thumb screws really firmly for the brushing work. I worked my way through all the thumb screws in this way, but for the slot head bolts I thought I'd try out this new device. 
It's a little three jaw chuck which goes in the drill. It's like a miniature lathe chuck. I got it from Temu for around £16 and I have to say it's very well made. The Chinese are just good at this stuff. The advantage of a chuck like this is that it's larger capacity and the precision with which you can place the part in the jaws. Now although it's self-centering in the Z axis, you do need to adjust it in the other two axes and it's not perfect, but it's good enough for the slow speed we're working at. The upper edges of the slot on this bolt head were a bit chewed up. Now that's quite common on old tools, and on this tool all the bolt heads were like that. The easy solution is a diamond card to tidy up, then finish off with fine abrasive. The little three jaw chuck is really good for holding rods like this, and for longer rods I could even mock up some kind of a steady rest. Now recently I've been using these abrasive pads more often. The red is medium and the grey is fine. They work really well. This is the recess on the main stock that takes the slitting cutter and I just need to ensure that it's reasonably smooth. So I've stuck some 320 grit paper onto a cutter of appropriate size and that makes quick work of this. A high polish isn't necessary, just no lumps or burrs to ensure smooth action. Both the knob and the handle are covered in some kind of a varnish and this has got chipped over the years and it just doesn't feel good so it has to be corrected. Here I'm making good use of the Temu chuck again and I'm using one of the blades as a scraper. Now I'm onto some 180 grit paper to smooth off and then I can brush off the dust. Now I could have just sanded the knob smooth but it would still have needed some kind of a finish so it was better to just scrape off all the varnish and put on some oil. So this is what I'm doing now. I'm applying some of Shane Skelton's Peacock Oil. This is his Regal Red and it gives a gorgeous dark finish on this rosewood. I'm almost certain the wood used for the knob handle and fence is rosewood. It takes quite a few coats to make sure it's penetrated well. And then I use the wire wool and oil just to make sure there's no nibs. Finally, I'm using some of Shane's Peacock Wax to finish off. I let this wax sit for a while before buffing it, and now it feels smooth and silky. It's a similar process with the handle of the main stock. Scrape off all the varnish, sand it, oil it. Now I find it easier to use a straight edge cutter on any convex surface and a curved edge cutter on any flat surface. Once the oil stops drying, I wipe off any excess then leave it overnight. Rub the wax in well to make sure it penetrates. I'm very satisfied with the improvement over that rubbishy varnish finish. The third piece of rosewood to look at is the main fence. Now as you can see here mine has a deep score along the face. So I begin by using my Lee Nielsen number no. 4 smoothing plane to remove that. The rosewood can be quite tough to plane but I find that a sharp blade, a light cut and just taking your time works. I do need to make sure that the front and rear faces are parallel to each other. So I'm using my dial calipers to find the thickest corner and then a curved blade to target that. Note how the plain body is centralised over one of the edges of the fence. Now getting to within a couple of hundredths of a millimetre is plenty accurate enough. Although they're not working surfaces, I still smoothed off the rear face and both narrow faces then finished off the whole process with the block plane just to put a wee chamfer on each edge. 
The instructions say not to use oil to finish off this fence, claiming that the oil makes the wood swell. Well, I'm not convinced, but to be on the safe side, I just finished off with only a good thick coat of wax. There's still quite a bit of metal work to be done. Now, some parts will just need cleaning, but any working surface, I'm going to smooth and polish. This is the cutter bolt having its threads brushed. Then I smooth and polish the bearing surface using medium grit paper on the reference plate. As you can see on the finished piece, it has a wedge section cut out. And it's this that provides the clamping action on the cutter. There's three depth gauges and they all need the bearing surfaces smoothed and polished. So I did the smoothing on this 180 grit paper on the reference plate. I did polish on 1000 grit paper but unfortunately that clip got deleted. I also eased off all the edges. Any non-working surface was just cleaned with flexible abrasive pads. This is the main stock depth gauge. The sliding section depth gauge. And the slitting cutter depth gauge. This is the adjustable beading stop. It has a very narrow bearing surface, so that was polished, but all the other surfaces were cleaned with abrasive pads. Moving on to the metal portion of the fence assembly now, most of this was simply cleaned with the wire brushes and the abrasive pads, but I did flatten this surface. The rosewood portion of the fence assembly attaches here. This is a little device called a cam steady. Now this entire edge is a bearing surface so it needs smoothing and polishing. The outside non-working surfaces of the skates of the main stock and the sliding section need a good clean. So I'm using the medium grit abrasive pad to clean off the dirt. Then I'll use the fine grit abrasive pad just to give it a bit of a sheen and that's all it's going to need. Right, let's do a bit of assembly just to see what it looks like now. I've installed all the sub-assemblies onto the main stock just for the time being so we can get an idea. So the next thing to do is to insert the rods. I'm using the long rods just for demonstration purposes. Now we can slide on the sliding section. Here I'm sliding on the cam steady just so you can see where it goes. Finally I slide on the fence assembly. Of course there's still one or two other components which I've not installed at this stage. Those are for special purposes and I'll cover them in the next video. But for now this just gives us a good idea of the general arrangement. Well that's pretty much all the super tuning done. In the next video I'll be sharpening all the cutters making any final adjustments, and then we'll figure out how to use this thing. But for the meantime, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Mr. Lin's Workshop.